quick question. What do you call a gorilla who has been locked up in prison? A convict. All right, fine. I'll stop being cheesy and get to the movie. Today, I'll be showing you a 2018 action-packed sci-fi film where genetically modified creatures cause destruction across the country, forcing a primatologist and a genetic engineer to team up to stop them. The movie is called Rampage and Be Warned, spoilers ahead, so watch out and take care. The movie begins by explaining in 1993, a revolutionary technology known as CRISPR was developed and in 2016 is put to use in deadly experiments. A lab rat that had been genetically modified with CRISPR wipes out and kills the entire crew of a space station in the present day. The only survivor, Dr. Kerry Atkins, contacts the leaders of Energine, the company responsible for creating the CRISPR mutagen. Energine CEO's Claire Wyden orders Dr. Atkins to return the mutagen samples. Dr. Atkins returns to retrieve the samples, but is pursued by the monstrous rat. She manages to reach an escape pod, but it is launched as the station explodes and the rat is still on board. The pod is damaged and explodes, killing Dr. Atkins. The samples are scattered all across the country. Primatologist Davis Akoy and his colleagues, Nelson, Connor, and Amy, visit an animal refuge in San Diego to check on an ape named Pavo. Pavo is agitated and George, an albino gorilla, charges into the enclosure. Connor's panicked behavior agitates Pavo, who chases him until George intervenes. Pavo is afraid of George until Davis intervenes. Later, Nelson approaches Davis and expresses his curiosity about why Davis feels more drawn to animals than to people. Davis explains that he feels a natural bond with animals. That night, the samples of the dangerous genetic mutagen arrive in various locations. An ape enclosure, a forest where a pack of wolves reside, and a Florida river. A crocodile consumes the entire sample, while Lone Wolf is exposed to the gas and George is exposed as well. The next morning, Davis is called in to check on George. They find George in the bear enclosure with a dead bear inside. George has a scratch mark on his chest, indicating to Davis that he was the first one to be attacked by the bear. When George gets up and approaches Davis, it becomes apparent that he has grown almost nine feet tall. Realizing that something is wrong, George is locked up. This enraged him, and he escapes his confinement, causing chaos at the sanctuary and terrorizing visitors. Just as the police arrive, Davis is able to corner him. But before he can talk George down, a helicopter flies overhead and begins firing darts at George until he passes out. Burke leads the military force into the forest in Wyoming to recover the remaining mutagen sample. Burke informs the Wyden family that the container holding the deadly mutagen is missing. As the team investigates, they find dead wolves scattered on the ground and a giant footprint in the dirt. Suddenly, the modified wolf, named Ralph, tracks them down and starts attacking them as they move through the forest. The squad fires at Ralph, but he manages to take them out one by one until only Burke is left. Burke orders the helicopter to fire at Ralph, but the wolf jumps out of the trees and crashes the chopper into the lake. Ralph catches and kills Burke. Harvey Russell, a government agent, arrives at the refuge to take George away and hide him from the public. Davis and Kate are also detained and questioned by Russell. While Russell thinks they have the situation under control, Davis believes transporting George is a death sentence. After reviewing their records, Russell reveals that Kate was fired from Energine for attempting to steal research and spent 13 months in prison. Davis realizes that Kate is lying and unable to cure George. Claire, the CEO of Energine, activates a radio frequency that calls the mutant animals to the company headquarters in Chicago. Despite being sedated, George picks up on the frequency and wakes up, causing destruction in his enclosure. George is about to kill Russell when Davis intervenes. George knocks him unconscious. The plane's engine fails and starts to crash. Davis, Kate, and Russell all put on parachutes and jump out of the plane before it crashes. On arriving at their destination, Davis, Kate, and Russell discover that George has managed to survive the crash and is heading towards the city. Davis expresses doubt towards Kate, 
who reveals that her brother was suffering from cancer and she had hoped that the CRISPR technology from Energine could cure him until she found out that the company was using it for creating dangerous weapons. Davis shares his own backstory of how he rescued George from poachers. Russell then thanks Davis for saving his life. Together, they team up with a military group to contain the animals that have been summoned to the city of Chicago and steal a helicopter to enter the city, with the belief that they are the only ones who can stop the chaos. When George, Ralph, and Lizzie reach Chicago, they start wreaking havoc by destroying buildings and anything in their path. By the time David and Kate arrive, much of the city is in ruins. They quickly make their way to Energine in search of a cure. In the midst of the chaos, Davis manages to land the helicopter, and they rush into the building. They eventually find the cure lab, but the Widens beat them to it. Claire tells them that the cure will only reduce the animal's aggression and not change their size. Before taking Kate with her, she shoots Davis in the abdomen. The Widens try to escape with their chemicals and Kate in their helicopter, but the beasts start climbing the tower. George reaches the top and destroys the helicopter, causing Brett to flee. Kate appears to be doomed, but an injured Davis arrives just in time to distract George long enough for Kate to grab a bottle of cure and force it into her bag. Kate then shoves Claire into George's path, causing him to grab and eat her along with the cure. Meanwhile, Brett is trying to escape when he runs into Russell, who demands Brett's laptop containing his research. Brett agrees and rushes out the door, only to be killed by falling debris. As Davis and Kate wait for the cure to take effect, Ralph and Lizzie also reach the top. Davis and Kate board the Widen's chopper to protect themselves from the destruction, but before they can take off, the skyscraper starts collapsing. Despite this, Davis and Kate manage to take off and survive. Back on the ground, George returns to normal and speaks to Davis. But unlike George, Ralph and Lizzie continue causing chaos and destroying the city. Davis and George decide to put an end to it and take them both out together. The military plans to take lethal action, but this would also mean George's death, so Kate turns to Russell to delay the attack. Meanwhile, George battles Ralph and Lizzie, but soon finds out the wolf can fly and shoot quills, and Lizzie's skin is indestructible. Davis helps George and manages to deceive Ralph into gliding toward him, only to move out the way, causing Ralph to fly into Lizzie's path. Ralph is then grabbed by the throat as Lizzie bites off his head and swallows it. George tries to punch Lizzie, but Lizzie proves too strong for George and throws him, which wounds him. Davis intervenes once again and tries to take her down with a grenade belt and the chopper's cannon, but it barely scratches her. Lizzie chases Davis until George steps and leaps with the pole, slamming it into Lizzie's eye and runs it through her brain, killing her. The military calls off the strike after witnessing the events. George appears to be weakened by his wounds and dies. Davis is heartbroken, and when he gives up, he sees Georgie's fingers twitching. George then gets up and gives the finger to Davis while everyone laughs at him. The heroes leave the city as the movie comes to an end. Lesson we learn from this movie is a simple one. Be nice to your pets, and they will be nice to you. And as always, the like button is much appreciated, and enjoy the rest of my content. Thank you.